Let's take a bit of a closer look at the morpher controls. So morphing is switching between four or five different parameter snapshots. So basically I've got something right now, the bass level of this particular patch that I'm using. It's modifying a guitar sound. And as I switch between A, B, C, and D, and let's turn motion off for now so that I can just do it manually. I can click on A, and you'll see that we're going to have a different set of parameters. All these knobs down here will move a little bit and change around to whatever A is as we get closer to it. All right, so we got some pitch artifacts there with A. Let's see what B brings us. Interesting. All right, Resonitarium is really filtering out some stuff on C. And then D, very, very hefty with the metaverb, with the reverb. So there we go. Now, what we can do is you can move the mouse in between, move this little point around, but you can also be very precise and use the motion. Um, this is called the angle, and that slides us in around in a circle. This right here will determine how far away from that center point you are. So by adjusting that and then adjusting that, the radius, you can kind of be very precise with exactly where you want to be in between these settings. And as I'm sure you can imagine, you can have an LFO or a step sequencer or whatever, any of the modulators modulate not just parameters down here, but actually modulate your position within the morpher, which will also adjust the parameters. So you really have a lot of uh, modulation and manipulation going on. So when I click on motion to turn it on, it's going to allow um, the LFO and whatever has been configured to control the morpher. Let's see. So right now we're stuck. Turn on motion, and it's moving around in different places. And as it's doing that, my sound is changing. So if I look and click the assign button on, I can kind of find what's changing that. And it looks like the step sequencer is doing that a little bit. Yeah, a couple of the couple of the step sequencers, two and one, are both changing the radius and that. And it's happening at, you know, certain times. Let's stop it and we'll get out of assign mode. So that's a pretty cool thing. If you want to use one of these, let's turn motion off again and get back here, the base point. If you want to make your own setting, if you want to, you can clear theirs first. So you can tap clear and clear out section A. So now we see B, C, and D are active. A is clear. It's kind of the same as base. Now I can go into morph save mode, click on the save button, and make some changes. Let's do it. Make some changes. Adjust the frequency. Some harmonics. Switch the pattern. Change the pulse width. Make it really echoey. There we go. And now I'll click on A, and we're saved. So I can get away from that setting. And watch the dials. So the things that we just adjusted, like the metaverb high end, the uh, iteration frequency. When I click on C, that's where they change. So that's how you can make your own morph slots, um, or what they call them sometimes morph offset. So you can make your own and slide between all of them. And you can turn motion on to allow the LFO or step sequence or anything in the modulation area to change your position in the morph window. So this modulation stuff, not only can it modulate the parameters directly, but it can also modulate your macro sort of area here. That's what the morph really is, isn't it? It's sort of a macro control for a bunch of parameters. So it can be modulating individual parameters and modulating a macro of all the parameters together. So a really extremely powerful way to manipulate your sound.